Hello, everyone. Welcome to week one of Agency Month. My name is Farron. I am a customer success manager here at Sprout, and I'm super excited to be joining you all today to moderate today's discussion with our agency experts. Before we get started, um, I want to get a pulse on how you all are feeling about successfully putting social at the center of your marketing strategy. We're going to do a quick poll, so share your answer, and we'll talk through a few housekeeping things as you're doing that. Make sure that you're getting involved in this conversation. We did this because of you all. This was voted by you all, so we want to make sure that you're involved. So keep an eye out for links and resources in the chat. Um, this is also going to be a great place to share your thoughts and experiences and connect with other agency peers. Um, if you share on social, please use hashtag agency life for our agency partners, um, hashtag Sprout partners as well. And then we'll be continuing the conversation in the Agency Exchange Facebook group all week long. So. We'll share some discussion points um, if you want to brainstorm, connect with other agency professionals, or pay it forward and share some advice. So please join us. With that, let's go ahead and meet our panel. So I'll kick things off again. I am Farron. I am a customer success manager here at Sprout. Pronouns are she and her. Um, I work with our agency customers to make sure they're onboarded into the platform, understand how to use it, and really set them up for maximum success. Emily, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and your agency. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Um, so yeah, I'm the CEO of the Foundry Collective. We are a full um, in-house digital marketing agency. We offer social media uh, services, web design, uh, email marketing, copywriting, all the fun stuff that is digital marketing. And uh, yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> awesome. And then Sarah, please introduce yourself and tell us about your agency. Yeah, hi there. My name is Sarah. I am the social media lead at an agency called Aerolux based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, we are a full service agency, so we handle traditional and digital. Um, and then as the social media kind of handling ads management and then also the creative that goes along with that. Awesome. So as you all can see, we have a powerhouse lined up and I'm super excited for this conversation. And if you're here, you're already ahead of the game, you know that social is important. Um, you wanna learn how to center it in the center of your marketing strategy, right? You wanna know, you know how to do it. If it's a struggle for you, you're coming to get some questions answered. Um, so we'll hear from our partners all the time that are creating and winning social forward strategies. We understand that it is a challenge. First, you have to convince your agency, right? That it's a good move and they need to prove the value to your client. So we're gonna be talking about that. We see you, we hear you, we understand. We appreciate the frustration. We appreciate you coming in and learning from us. So hopefully you get some good things out of that. So let's hear from our panelists on how they move the needle forward. Before we do that though, we just wanna jump in and talk a little bit about social strategy. You know, let's reflect on the state of the business marketing and what all marketers are up against right now, because we know that 2020 <laughs> has been a whirlwind, right? So the pandemic has sped up digital transformation significantly. I onboard new customers, like I mentioned, and they come to us saying, you know, we used to do traditional marketing. We're switching to social media now because you have to, you have to pivot really quickly. Um, so we've seen an online sales have increased dramatically between February and June of this year. Businesses face upheaval. Consumers are expecting faster responses because now we're all tied into our phone, right? We're all plugged in and we're expecting that instant response. We're already the microwave generation and that applies to social media as well. And they're being more critical of a brand's voice and their point of view. You know, there are a lot of different social justice issues going on. So they're just monitoring very heavily how you're acting, how you're responding to these different things. 79% um, of CMOs say that they are paying closer attention to brand activism. And all of this is happening while my marketing budgets are like, decreasing right people are saying we're running we don't know how to position social anymore we don't know if it's a priority anymore we don't know you know how we're going to make this make sense but cmos are stating that they are more dedicated to putting that budget into social so i think that's great because social data um, and social data is a powerful tool one of our favorite agency champions leslie pickney put it out during the sprout summit we just had um, social data is not a channel right it is a set of real-time conversations that can be leveraged across all aspects of business. Um, I was listening to, well, I was reading something from the Sprout Summit and somebody on there said that, you know, Twitter answers all the questions you never thought to ask, right? So it's gonna be great conversations that you never even thought to think of. You know, people are talking genuinely across these different social channels. So it's great information that you can leverage. 
And then, yes, as we know that social budgets could be increasing or decreasing despite marketing cuts um, and more consumers are going to focus more on social first before any other channel. Let's just kind of reflect on what social marketers are up against. So you'll see I have a few different things here, about 10 different things outlined. And some of the greatest challenges that we've heard are identifying and reaching their target audience, measuring ROI, which is super important, supporting your overall business goal, publishing content, which we have Sprout for, and then monitoring our competition, which we also have Sprout for. So as an agency, you really need to be prepared to solve for these challenges. So with that, let's dig in. How do we address the challenges, recognize what social marketers are up against, and help our agencies build and shift their clients into the next phase that is a social first and strategic strategy? Emily, we will start with you. Okay, hi, hi again. <laughs> okay, so um, can you just, so this question, can you repeat the question? Because it was really long. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, essentially, the question is, how do we help shift our clients into that next phase that is a social first and being strategic about it? How do we address those challenges? Awesome. Okay. So um, in my agency, what we do is have the conversation of the customer journey um, with them. So we try to explain to them that the customer journey is a very long, long path, right? So it, a person doesn't immediately become a customer. A person first needs to trust, like, and actually know you. And that's where social media comes into play. Um, so we try to educate a lot during the first stages of conversion. So meaning during the stages of us trying to get somebody in our, in our, in our, in our agency, um, the conversation is very much centered on uh, helping prospects or potential clients actually understand the importance of social media at each different phase of that customer journey. Um, and we have found that when we approach it that way, when we approach the conversation in that way, they start actually understanding social media and its importance at the brand awareness stage, at the conversion stage, um, at even at the at the um, customer centric stage too, right? Because now as marketers or social media managers, we are also kind of adopting a role of customer service and actually enhancing that part. So that's where you know social listening comes into play. I love what you said about Twitter. Um, a lot of us need to go into Twitter to actually understand what our customers are feeling about the brand, um, how are they perceiving the brand during these very difficult times. So it's, there's so many different layers uh, when it comes to the importance of social media and having that conversation initially to educate them on those layers is super important for us. That's huge, yeah. Sarah, would love to hear um, your thoughts on how you can help social marketers like centralize this idea of having social media at the center of their strategy. Absolutely. Um, again, 100% agree with what Emily said about the customer journey. It's so important to to meet the customer where they are instead of you know trying to have them come to you. You got to meet them wherever they are in their journey. Um, but it's also a matter of um, you know making sure that you have those two pieces of the puzzle when it comes to social, meaning ads and then also management. Mm -hmm. um, for us, definitely, you know, kind of leaving the selling to those ads to that ad side of social media, um, and then leveraging the management or the organic side of social um for that you know educational content um to be part of the conversation not necessarily being the subject of it the entire time um and you know kind of the stuff that emily was hitting on as well um just you know being being there for the customer wherever they are in their journey that's really good and i definitely love the idea of leaving the organic to like building that trust that community those conversations and just kind of building up the loyalty to your brand. And then once they see that ad on the selling side, it's like, okay, you know, we've had conversations with them. They're interacting and they're talking authentically on these different social networks. Of course, I'm gonna support this brand. Next question, what do you think um, is important to put social at the center of marketing? So what is the opportunity for agencies to be able to do that? We'll start with Sarah this time. Hi. Um, I mean, first and foremost, you know, social media is um, probably the easiest and fastest way to reach out to your communities. Um, I mean, especially compared to traditional where it's, you know, yeah. I hope my target audience is sitting in front of the TV at this given point when my ad is running. 
um, but also from uh, an agency standpoint or even just as a brand, um, it's so important for you to give a voice to your brand to um, personify it because that's how people are going to uh, resonate with your brand, how they're going to relate to it. Um, and there's no better way to do that than through social. For sure. And Emily would love to hear your feedback on that as well. Awesome. Yeah. So for me as the CEO, um, I think the opportunity lies in product diversification um, for us. So like, you know, yes, a lot of business owners may come to us for Facebook advertisement, like, you know, paid media, they may come for web design, they may come for, you know, blog maintenance, SEO, whatever it is. Um, but when you look at marketing as a whole, there is an entire marketing mix of things or tactics and techniques that you're supposed to be um, fully active in. And, you know, just because you have SEO and, and we talk about expectations a lot in my agency, expectations from the client's perspective, um, they believe that just with a website, that that's enough. Or they believe that with paid advertisement, that should be enough to for them to be successful, for them to scale. But you know, going back to the educational piece, like it's it's all of it, right? Like it's it's social media, it's paid advertisement, it's having a very well optimized website, it's having all of it put together and uh, work in, in sync so that you can actually be out there in front of the people that actually matter to you. So for me. <clears throat> the opportunity heavily rely or is heavily based on revenue, right? Like, you know, you, you get somebody to come in as a website customer and then you can upsell them into social media. And that increases obviously the revenue for the agency, but it also gives them an, a greater experience to the customer or the client, because then all of a sudden you don't have to go somewhere else to get another expert, uh, you know, to handle the social media for you. Everything is in-house. Um, and we already know your brand, your company from having uh, to offer or deliver on other products. That's awesome. Um, so think of it full scope. It's not just one bit and piece of it. It's think full scope, big picture. How are we going to make this make sense all around so that it's consistent? So you're showing up consistently in your website, online and social, all of those things. That's really good. All right. We're going to get into some fun here. Tell us about your most creative social driven campaign. Um, Emily, we'll let you kick this one off. <laughs> so, you know, I think that to be in social media, you have to be consistently creative. <laughs> but the one that stands out the most this year um, is actually the, um, so we had a, so we had a client that she, she was a speaker. So uh, you know, COVID happened and all the speaker speaking engagements went away and we had to kind of get back on the whiteboard and kind of figure out like, how do we market this brand, right? Because at this point, this is a personal brand. She's a speaker. How do we market this brand? So that way her revenue is still consistent and, you know, she's still like, just doesn't skip a beat. So we, as marketers, the social media managers um, had to sit down on the board and just say, Hey, listen, we need to redevelop your products offerings like it, there's no way around it like we need to move you from uh in-person speaking engagements to virtual speaking engagements and then we also um suggested a mastermind coaching type of program that she could charge around a thousand dollars per person for this and um we developed the, pro the product with her and then we started marketing that on social media and she transitioned fully from in-person to, to now, you know, having these virtual speaking engagements and also the coaching. Um, and we actually increased her revenue by around $15,000 a month off of that new product development. Um, so in terms of creativity, um, I think one of the things that social media managers don't really get a, enough credit for is actually knowing so the, the audience so well that you can actually tell what the products are that they're needing at that moment, right? And that's so important for, for you as a business owner to have that pulse in the, in the market well enough to understand what the products are that they need or what are the needs of the clients or the audience. Um, and so we were able to bring that back, bring that data or information back to our client. We told them, hey, listen, this is how people are moving now, right? Because everything is on social media. So we need to move you too. 
And thankfully she listened and uh, now she's a happy customer. <laughs> Wonderful. That's really such an awesome story to hear that she was able to pivot in the middle of madness right now. And it still worked out as a win for you and for her. So that's awesome. Yeah. Sarah, tell me about your most creative campaign. Yeah, for us, it was probably, especially during this, this weird COVID time, was uh, really implementing live streams into um, our client strategy. Um, one client in particular, um, they actually came to us with the interest of live streams, so we didn't really have to sell them on the idea. Um, they just didn't really have the resources or the knowledge to implement it. Um, and kind of, I'm sure like many businesses, brands out there, um, every year they have a huge kickoff event. Um, and so we had to digitalize that, make it virtual. Um, and it ended up being a huge success um and they definitely saw the results of it and that it went beyond just you know the health and safety of the participants um but it really was another um, vehicle to build that authority trust loyalty and educate their current community and also draw in um new people so that was definitely a win for both of us that is awesome all right so knowing that you all have done some really great creative campaigns now we're going to get into tactics so what tactics do you all use to get client buy-in for cent um, centering kind of social in the strategy if that's not been the traditional thing they've been used to doing sarah let's go <laughs> yeah um for us definitely the first thing that comes to mind is just educating the client um we first go in we have that initial meeting on you know what is what is your goal and how are we going to achieve that you know laying out a detailed plan um, utilizing research, case studies, um, even, you know, doing current um, industry analysis and competitor research, um, using tools like the Sprout Listening Tool, um, and then really from there, diving, or sorry, diving deep into, um, you know, what channels they should use, because, you know, not all uh, marketing channels are saying are the same and not all social platforms are the same, you know, it depends on your demographic. Um, are you B2B, B2C? Um, and backing up all of what you're saying with numbers. That's how we have found that we really get our clients attention. Um, specific data points and stuff like that. And then from there, they're open to a more in-depth in conversation about where they want to go. Yeah, it's really good that you called out that like not all social platforms are the same. But these are things that I tell customers, especially our listening customers. While you may not be on all the channels, and that's fine because you understand that your audience necessarily doesn't interact with you on all the channels. You definitely have to have your ears to the street is what I like to say when you're doing social listening. Listen into all of the channels that you can because you have no idea what you may be missing out on in these conversations. Emily, let's hear about some of the tactics that you use to get buy-in for social center strategies. Yeah, um, so I actually, I'm gonna have to piggyback over what Sarah said. It's a lot of um, just giving them an understanding of data points and just telling them really what the USP is for social media management. And I think that, um, you know, because a lot of, uh, you know, everybody here is probably our agency owners and things of that nature. It's really, it's really just telling them that social media is not just posting, like creating little cute cards and caps right? Like there's a lot of, you know, buyer psychology and persuasion that you need to be really good at. And, you know, aside from the business owner who, you know, we are salespeople in a way too. Like we are trying to actually position your, your product in, in, in a way that, you know, people feel like they trust the product or the brand or whatever in a way that they actually get interested. So, you know, it's a lot of like, back then when people are like in the marketplace and just shouting out for products and stuff like that, that's our, our role today, you know, and it's still as important as back then to continuously put your product or your brand at the forefront of the market. So um, it's, it's, it's that, it's, it's giving them the understanding of how we position the product is different than just posting little pictures and captions and things like that. We also use an editorial calendar presentation uh, aside from a proposal. Um, and so we kind of just plug in, you know, product launches, uh, different types of campaigns. We plug in all the different types of 
holidays that are out there, you know, the special events that happen uh, throughout the year that could, le could be leveraged for that specific brand so that they can see like a bird's eye view of the next quarter um, of all the content, all the different types of content that they should be using. I think that's great. And um, both of you all talked about using education. So we're going to hop into that into our next question. Sarah, I know that you mentioned using case studies to kind of educate your customers, but what are some other things that you do to educate your current or potential customers? Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely case studies based on like our current work from past clients, um, this uh, listening tools, like I mentioned before, but also just um, really going into um, data that all of these um people are you know posting on the internet i mean it's so easy to find data now um whether that's through um uh sorry case studies that other people have done um or you know sprout releases stuff all the time hootsuite hubspot facebook iq has their own hub for their own data um and then just going back you know to the um pew research and nielsen and stuff like that um, we have found that those sources have a ton of great information um, and then presenting that stuff to the client as one of the very first steps is definitely important to getting your foot in the door for an open conversation. For sure. And then Emily, I'll pivot the question just a little bit and tell me a little bit about what data or, you know, what are they using to pitch this? So if there are any like particular data points that you know you should include when you're talking about those things, I'd love to hear some of that. Yeah, so I wanted to add in that we do all the things that Sarah said, but we also look at the competitors, what they're doing. So if if we look at the competitor activity as the data point, we look at how consistent they are on social media. Are they posting every single day? How often or what kind of like like what time frames are they posting? What kind of content they're posting? Is it uh, a lot of direct response type of content or is it like educational pieces? Is it engagement pieces? Um, we also look at how often they show up as well as like the first, like if we're talking about personal brands, because that's what we, so, you know, we focus on the most. Um, and, you know, are they showing up on, uh, I, you know, IG stories or whatever, right? So we, we kind of look at the entire competitor activity and we also um, deliver that. And there's also like, you know, traffic traffic points like you know how many web pages or web views that you actually can get from social media like um i mean there's there's so many different points of data but i for me specifically in my experience when we're actually pitching and trying to convert a client they care mostly about the competitors so like if we're able to actually demonstrate like look your competitor is doing is posting every single day on instagram and this these are the kind of pieces of content that they're posting and we're looking at yours and you know yes we can use uh tools that like what sprout social has but it's it's that information is readily available too on instagram or wherever platform that they're supposed to be in right so we can just kind of do a comparison of what they're doing versus what the competitor is doing and most of the time they're like oh oh i need to i need to get on my on my on my game you know like i need to get in there so that's that's what i've used the most to convert yeah there's no better data than actual social proof right i can show you this like i can tell you about it but if i show you then maybe you'll understand <laughs> how key this is great all right so then we are going to hop into some takeaways um but i think before we do that we're going to ask a question from our audience we did get a question from astrid so thank you for sharing that um she wants to know what's your point of view about the roi of social media um, so anyone feel free to hop in and answer that one are you t well if um i can i can answer that so okay. um if we're talking about like direct roi i know we always have that issue uh as well when we have that conversation um but going back to customer be behavior and customer journey um you know it's really important to put yourself out there especially now during the pandemic and you know everything that's happening it, it's it's clear as day that we are transitioning into an era where everyone needs to be in social media it's no longer a luxury or a plus to be on social media it's you're going to get left behind if you're not on social media and you're not present in front of the people that actually matter to you so when we're talking about roi 
Um, I typically, I'm a little bit of a hardcore salesperson, um, you know, on the call and with my clients or potential clients. It's the question is, do you want to continue to, to do, you know, to, you know, not be on social media and left behind, or do you want to actually ride this wave? Because, you know, it's going to leave you. <laughs> it's going to leave you. If you don't hop on it, it's going to leave you regardless. So in terms of ROI, I, I don't think, I don't think it's, it's measurable any longer in the sense that like back then it would be like, oh yeah, you can't measure ROI because you know you just can't because you can't really track the conversions and things like that. Which I also actually challenge that because you know you have UTM codes, you have Bitly, but like you can you can track all that information as well. Um, but it's now ROI the ROI is not measurable because you have to do it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you actually have to be on social media regardless. So there's no there's no measure to it. It's now an obligation as you know, if you want to grow that you have to be on it. That's right. Really I actually sad. have something, sorry, I have something to add to oh. that too as well. Um, I would also just say to always keep the big picture in mind. Um, mm -hmm. Chances are social media isn't going to be the only channel that you're using in your marketing strategy. So, you know, the ROI on your social might be, you know, just throwing out a number, you know, it might, be 50%, but it's affecting the next channel in your strategy in that funnel um, mm -hmm. to where as you're moving down that funnel, it's actually having a bigger impact than you think it's having. Um, those numbers are increasing as you're going, you know, from social to pay-per-click to retargeting. So just keep the big picture in mind. Yeah, we got a lot of co-signing and agreeing happening here in the chat. So folks are definitely agreeing with you. And then we do have a question for you, Sarah. What are um, one to two social data points that you try to surface up early on in your client relationships to ensure that they see the value of social? Yeah, um, I would say definitely t touch points is just like a huge thing, you know. I mean, I know there's multiple, you know, sources out there that, you know, it, it varies some. But just that the fact that, you know, no, no one is going to see your ad for the very first time, not know who you are, and buy your product or service. Um, so you have to make sure that you have multiple touch points, whether you're doing multiple campaigns through social or you're utilizing different marketing channels. Um, so definitely that is a huge you know, key factor in just marketing strategy as a whole. Um, and then the other one is probably we, we really try to hit big, hit hard on uh, remarketing. Just like the fact that that is, you know, I think it's like 76% more likely that somebody is going to click on your ad if you utilize that strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so remarketing and then multiple touch points, which they kind of go together. So yeah, for sure. I love it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then one last question from our audience from Lauren. How can you determine the spend budget for pay ads um, when being approached by a client who doesn't have prior knowledge or experience with paid ads? So that's gonna be a tough one. Like how do you even convince this person to put some money behind an ad? Either of you all, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you wanna oh, I'll go. All right. Okay, so uh, for us when somebody is asking like hey should you know about facebook ads period we typically ask like the tough question like what is your current revenue like how many like per month like how many sales do you get per month um what is your current uh email list size like we don't try we don't go straight for the juggler right like we go we actually ask these questions because it's really important to make sure that they have solid data that we can use to retarget on Facebook ads, that we can create a very wholesome marketing strategy on the paid side. Um, if they don't have any of that data, then we go we go to okay. So let's kind of take it slow. Um, sometimes we we use anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars a month to take to take it slow, right? To actually create that brand awareness strategy and. Even with Facebook, I, I think we're kind of just deviating with to paid advertisement, but even with Facebook ads, there, there is that, that buyer journey that you have to meet, right? Because ads, you know, with ads, you don't just go straight for the conversion. You, you want to do some brand awareness. You kind of want to layer it with brand awareness and you want to layer it with conversion ads. You want to layer it with some retargeting at the, at the, at the very mid, uh, I mean, bottom of the funnel. 
Um, so, you know, for us, if you just wanted to start, it would be around 500 to $1,000 a month. And I know that you, I, I didn't want to give like a superficial answer because yeah. I don't think that would help. I think uh, for us, just just so that you know, it's five hundred to a thousand dollars a month to create that brand awareness um, strategy, and it's it's a slow, ongoing thing for them. Um, but the goal for that brand awareness strategy is to get their brand out there, obviously, but also pixel um, data in into their websites, into their landing pages, so that way we can start creating more data within the ecosystem of the brand. I hope that that was. That. <laughs> no, that was great. Lauren, I hope that answers you. No, that was really great. I um, mean, we are right at time. So we're just going to fly through this last screen. A couple of takeaways from you all. So we see here, know your audience. Editorial calendar first um, is a tip from Emily. And then education is key is kind of the main thing that we've heard around throughout this entire conversation. So just want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Emily and Sarah, for giving us your time. Thank you for all the attendees who have hopped on. Um, we really appreciate it. So if you all do have any questions, feel free to email us partners at SproutSocial.com. Thanks for joining week one of Agency Month. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome.